All right, your next poet up to the mic is living proof that the Dayton Poetry Slam is a quadruped. Put your hands together for Lincoln Schreiber! Trying to figure out where the fuck he's getting quadruped from. So, just a heads up on the YouTube front, I'm going to have all the videos from the last show up this week. It's just been fucking hell of the last couple weeks uh, in work wise, life wise, shit wise. So, we'll have the, those videos up this week. Another episode of the Dayton Poetry Slam podcast, which will make 11. And then. Um, the new videos from tonight will be uploaded next week. So keep that in mind. Keeping things going, you know, until we're back again on January 15th. So, thank you. For, oh, that is confirmed? Awesome. Okay. You'll have to come up and talk about that because you have the information on that feature. So, all right. It's, it's a holiday tradition that I have to do this, this poem. So... Somebody could, like, oh, you're getting pictures? Okay, good. Every professor has that one piece, that one element that they can pull out of their back pockets at any time. When they're too tired, too hungover, or still too actively drunk to accurately bring about a solid performance in the classroom. During Decembers, this is one that I always like to pull out myself in classes. An analyzation of popular Christmas songs. According to the Huffington Post, because you always have to cite your sources, Plagiarism is real. A Christmas song is a complex organism. At their best, our classic Yuletide anthems always seem to find that impossible balance between timelessness and nostalgia, tapping into some sort of greater collective memory of a warm and fuzzy feeling. Unfortunately, on the flip side, though, Christmas has also inspired more silly, grating novelty songs than any other 364 days of the year combined. Yes, I'm looking at you, Halloween. And we're so left with the annual wintertime conundrum. Can we continue listening to and loving a genre of music that consists largely of bubblegum beavers and grandmas getting run over by reindeers? The answer, of course, always seems to be yes. And not just because we've forgiven Paul McCartney for wonderful Christmas time. Fuck you! The truth is, no matter how many hokey Christmas songs you send racing for the shopping mall exits, there will always be those pristine, unmistakable, permanently enjoyable classics that keep you coming back and feeling all over again. And also, note the nomenclature. I'm saying Christmas. And that's not a defiance act against political correctness, because no matter the thoughts or the efforts, we primarily celebrate Christmas. How many Hanukkah songs have you heard on the radio outside of Adam Sandler? Have you ever heard a mention of Kwanzaa on the radio, ever? You see, most our... Okay, my problem with Christmas music is the complete lack of variety that comes from it. Yes, you can make the argument that postmodern music, by definition, anything from the 1950s until today, is lacking of complete variety because of the overplayed aspect. Well, that's my argument here. However, it's flawed from the beginning due to the nature of the music. It doesn't matter who or when the song recorded happens. It's still the same damn song! It's still the same flawed logic. Let's start off with the aforementioned Mr. McCartney, one of the men responsible for some of the most influential and powerfully written music since the Hallelujah Chorus gave us one of the most horrible earwigs ever. A song so oversynthesized that lesser coded MP3 files actually make it sound better. No, I have not forgiven and will not forgive Wonderful Christmas Time, nor can I forgive McCartney's writing partner Leonard for Happy Xmas, a song so full of Christmas cheer and known for introspective power that people were driven to outrageously cheap bottles of high-octane eggnog to escape thinking of their own shortcomings. Of course, the real solution would be to get off your ass and do something about it. Now, in the interest of time, let's take a look at the current top 10 Christmas music and see if we can't spot the flaws. Number 10. Santa Baby. I'm not saying she's a gold digger. But apparently you, she ain't messing with, eh, well, you get the idea. Number nine, Sleigh Ride. For all those that aren't band geeks, know the pain of what I'm talking about. A standard played by every, or yeah, yep, the damn wood slap. 
a standard played by every orchestra ever. A hugely over-technical song to play, and even worse when you try to add words to the goddamn thing. However, try not to bounce in your seat as if you were really weighing, weighing, riding on that sleigh. Wait a minute, how many of you have ever ridden on a sleigh? Anyone? One, two, three, you're lying. All of you. <laughs> Number eight, Winter Wonderland, a song that embodies every fear of commitment ever to raise its ugly head. We're going to build a snowman. Shouldn't it be snow person? Come on. Then pretend that he's a parson desperate to marry somebody because of the job market so bad, and then we'll say no. Why were you pretending in the first place? Were you gauging each other's true interests? And that leads us right into the next song, Baby, It's Cold Outside. Fuck you. She says no seven times in that song. Twice says what's in this drink. But baby, I'll rape you here. No. Number six, Feliz Navidad. The only song in Spanish that most English folks can actually sing. However, the second and the rest verse are in fucking English. Number five, All I Want for Christmas is You. Very few males listen to this song and not think of the picture of Mariah Carey on the front cover. Actually, a lot of females don't either, let's be honest. <laughs> Very few individuals would actually be satiated with just having their significant other for Christmas and nothing else, except perhaps in extreme distance scenarios. Number four, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You ever notice that the reindeer didn't accept, Santa and didn't accept Rudolph until they were forced to by Santa? No one ever talks about the next day when no one would play with Rudolph ever again. That's why in every subsequent special, Rudolph is never in the North Pole. Check that shit out. There's five other specials they've done. That fucker is never in the North Pole. And you never see another reindeer with him. Number three, 12 days of Christmas. If you're not drunk by the fifth day of Christmas, you're probably taking five good bong hits. The over-repetitive nature is only matched by McCartney. Number two, grandma got run over by a reindeer. Let's check this out. One, you let a drunk grandmother stumble out of the house by herself. Two, I have never known a person at that age to ever forget their medication. They have every pill that's ever been prescribed to them in their purse, along with that wad of candy that's been there since they bought the purse. For most of them, it's the only thing there. And the number one Christmas holiday song, White Christmas, You Racist Bastards. <laughs> Let me wrap this lecture up by saying the simple fact. Turn off the station that plays nothing but Christmas music from October on. And if you feel the need, just throw in the soundtrack to Charlie Brown Christmas. Yeah.